Hello everyone, my name is Juan de Arte. Today I'm going to show you how to take pictures at night and how to edit those pictures using Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. First and foremost, let's go over what you're going to need. You're going to need a camera that you can fully control all settings like a DSLR. You'll need a tripod, a shutter remote control, and most importantly, coffee. Why a DSLR? You need to have full control of the camera settings. Why do you need a tripod? Right, you might be able to pull it off with surrounding stable objects like a wall or the hood of your car, but it's not the same. Seriously, just get a tripod. You can find them cheap on Amazon for under 20 bucks. I have a $35 one that does the trick. I'll link it below. Why do you need a shutter remote control? It avoids camera shake. You want the camera as still as dried cement to get the razor sharp images. I've got mine for like seven bucks on Amazon. And again, I'll link below. Why coffee? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. It's late at night and you need any excuse to drink coffee, really. Now let's jump into the camera settings. Like I said earlier, set the camera to manual mode. Then set your camera to the lowest ISO it goes. Mine goes down to 100. I wouldn't really go past 200. This is going to be a long exposure shot, so having the ISO to the lowest setting prevents the picture from being too grainy. Next, set the aperture about two to three full stops from your lowest aperture of your lens. So for example, if you have a lens that opens as wide as 2.8, you want about two to three full stops to be about aperture eight. Next, you want to move your shutter speed until the exposure level is right in the middle. I also like to set up my drive mode to self timer two seconds. This means that when I press the shutter button, that it's gonna take two seconds before it takes that shot. I know what you're thinking. Why do I need a remote control if I'm gonna press that shutter and then it's not gonna shoot the, the but just the, get it. Now let's go ahead and dive right into Lightroom. So let's go ahead and open up Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. So we're gonna be working with this picture right here. Obviously I took this picture at night. Uh, and we're gonna make some edits in Lightroom to be able to make it look like this. As you can see, the colors pop more, they're more vibrant. I was going for more of a warm, calm feeling. Uh, it's a late night bite with your friends in the corner market, maybe a slice of pizza, some coffee. The world is going a thousand miles per hour, but inside that time machine, everything slows down. And that's what I was scrolling for. So hopefully I achieved that. But let's go ahead and, and show you how I got to that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a virtual copy of this same exact picture by going down on the bottom left, right clicking and creating a virtual copy. So creating a virtual copy is actually a very good way to create a different look for the same exact picture. So for example, I created a virtual copy now of this one, right? So right now they look the same because I created a copy. Uh, I can go over here and make it a black and white. That actually looks pretty good. Uh, and then I can create a virtual copy again of that and then create, so if I can right click here, create a virtual copy. And then I can then make this one go really dark and I don't know, something extreme, right? Uh, super vibrant and saturation, I don't know. You get the picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. Yes. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and go back here. So the first thing we're gonna do to this picture is we're gonna reset all these edits that I had done on the, on the first one here. So you can do that by going to the bottom right here, hitting reset, as you can see all of that zeros out. Uh, so previous was there, reset, everything zero. So one of the things you can do to get a head start on editing your pictures is hitting the auto tone here on the right hand side. So if you hit auto, what Lightroom is doing is trying to guess the best settings for your exposure, for your contrast, for your highlights, uh, for your shadows, for your whites, for your blacks. It only changes the settings in the basic panel. It doesn't change anything down here. And now that I've done the auto settings, I actually like to reset and put certain things back to zero. I want to be the one that controls the vibrance, so I um, zero that out. By the way, if I uh, want to zero something out, I can either double click on the word or I can double click on the actual button here. So double click there, that zeroes out. So if it's all the way over here, double click, goes back to the middle, double click on the word, goes back to the middle. So I really am just concerned with Adobe auto adjusting my highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, and I still actually go back and adjust it myself. 
So after doing the auto setting, the next thing you want to do is if there's any sort of cropping that you need to do on the picture, now's a good time. You don't want to do that towards the end. You want to do this at the beginning. This is the order I go. You don't have to go in this order, but I like this particular order. That's my particular workflow that's been working for me for years. So I like to crop the picture before I start editing anything after auto settings. But if you can get the picture composed the way you want it composed in camera, that's the best way to do it. This particular picture, I'm not gonna do any cropping, but you can crop it here, however you like. You can make it a portrait, you can adjust it. By the way, if you don't know, if you leave the shift key pressed, it does a perfect crop so it doesn't mess with the aspect ratio. Another shortcut you can do if you're trying to get a perfect portrait so it just kind of flips it. If you are in the crop tool and you press the X key, it actually rotates it. So now you have instead of a landscape, you have portrait mode. So the next thing I like to do is let's close the basic panel here. Uh, I like to go to my lens correction. So what this does it certain lenses have warping in the corners or vignetting that happens also you can have some chromatic aberration uh, i like to make those corrections there and then i like to close it off and then that way it doesn't take much real estate on my right hand side here so the next thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna open up my basic panel again and i'm gonna start messing with the temperature uh, i can make it really cold or make it really warm and like I said earlier, I was going for the warm look, uh, not so much the cold, although you could go for that. It really depends. That's the beauty about photography is that you're the artist. I shot it at 3300, uh, maybe about 3800. By the way, if you're on one of these settings and you click on it, uh, you can use your mouse scroll up and down to uh, move the temperature up and down. I'm not gonna mess with the tint uh, and I'm gonna jump over the exposure remember we also um, zeroed out the contrast and we're gonna jump to the whites and blacks uh, the whites and blacks again Adobe Lightroom already did its best job to try to put it in a place where it's not clipping as you can see this is gonna highlight white when it starts clipping that means it's clipping right there that means that you're losing the quality of the image Another thing you can do is you can hard press this button and you can press the Alt key. It, it shows you once you start adjusting where it starts clipping. So what I like to do is I like to go dark and then once I start seeing a lot of little clipping then I stop there. Which is really going to be where Adobe actually set it. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to close the basic panel and we're going to open up the tone curve panel. And you can adjust the tone curve yourself. What I like to do, I like to cheat a little bit, and I like to go to the point curve here and do a strong contrast on a picture like this. You can mess if you want medium contrast or strong contrast. Uh, don't worry about it darkening too much. That's why I like to work in this way as well because I leave the exposure to the end. If I need to adjust this, I can, but we're gonna close that off. I'm gonna go back to my basic panel and I'm gonna add some clarity. This is also gonna make the picture a little bit more contrasty. Uh, and if I start going up, down, to give you an idea what this is doing, I'm gonna zoom in here to the sign and I'm gonna start going up on the clarity. About if I go really high or really low. If you're shooting portraits of people, uh, you, you can do some clarity to kind of soften up their skin uh, by going minus you know, no more than 20 you don't want it to glow too much but for something like this i'm gonna up the clarity uh, and maybe about 70 is about right i'm not gonna mess with the dehaze button but as you can see this is what it does to the image sorry i didn't mean to hurt your eyes there uh maybe i'll add a little bit maybe like a five this is where i'm gonna mess with my highlights and shadows on a picture like this i like to raise the shadows all the way up and you can start seeing some of the details here come out so if i zero that out kind of dark here in the shadows if i go all the way up you'll see all those details come out the highlights i'm going to lower them a little bit maybe just about there now if i want to add some punch to the colors i can do some vibrance here 
and some saturation. Next, I'm gonna close this basic panel again and open up the color panel. And I'm gonna mess with the luminance first. Uh, this is kind of like the highlights with colors, really. Um, so if I look at the red signs here and if I go down with the luminance or up with the luminance, you kind of see what it's doing. The building as well, I can go up or down. I think I'm gonna go up. I want it to pop a little bit more. Same with the yellows. Again, you don't want to overdo it. I don't see much of these colors here, so I don't want to mess with those. Next, I'll go to the saturation here, and then you can adjust every single color individually. So if I want that red on that car that was passing by to pop a little bit more, I can go up a little. I'm saying here, here, and I think that's gonna be fine for now. Uh, I'm not gonna change the hue, uh, but for example, if I wanted this building uh, to be a different color, so I can go and turn this uh, yellowish orange building into like a greenish building. Um, one tip you can do is if, if you click on this little handle and then you can click on any color you're trying to adjust and you can hard press up and then move your mouse up and down and you can adjust your colors that way as well. But again, we're not going to do that and we're going to close this panel. The next panel we're going to open is the detail panel. This is going to sharpen up your image and it's also going to give you the ability to remove any sort of noise. So I like to sharpen my image uh, just a little bit, maybe about 60. I'm going to zoom in for the noise. You can see that now if I go all the way up, you'll see what's going to happen. That's not the look I'm trying to go for. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe go around 40 is about right. We're going to close that off. So I'm going to open up my effects panel and I'm going to do a little bit of vignetting uh, just to darken uh, the edges a little bit. So you know, here to show you what it does, you can go the extreme, right? Um, I don't think anyone likes that look, but it's there if you want to use it. Um, but I'm just going to go about maybe 20 on the vignetting, just darken up the edges here. Also, if you wanted to add any grain to your picture, you can add that there. So let's go to the extreme so you see what it does. That's not the look I'm going for. Usually I, I like to add a little bit of grain to my black and whites. So we're going to close the effects panel. Now we're going to open up the split toning panel. Zoom out here. And this is where I can go and uh, all the highlights here, I can actually add even more pop to it. So to give you an example, I'm gonna go to the saturation here and go all the way up. So all my highlights are super saturated. Uh, I'm gonna go with like a 15 and then, actually if I go back up to the saturation, you can change the color of those highlights. As you can see, that color is green or purple or pink or yellow. Um, I'm gonna go saturation about 15 and the hue, I kinda wanna leave it where, how the building looks. So I'm gonna leave it with the, between orange and red color. You can do that with the shadows as well. So if you go all the way up, you can see what it's, all the shadows are coming up. Just a little bit on the shadows as well, 15, and maybe a little bit more yellowish. To kinda distinguish from the highlights. Gonna close the split toning panel now. Gonna go back to my basics panels and this is now where I start adjusting my exposure. Maybe about there. So now we're pretty close to the edits I did originally on this picture. So if I go back here, it's actually pretty darn close. One thing I did forget to do, I just noticed, is down here there were some shiny objects on the road uh, I don't want your eye to kind of wander there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some spot removals on that. Um, another one here, using my mouse again up and down to make it big or small. Click there. The last thing I wanna do as well is I'm gonna use this graduated filter and I'm gonna go to the exposure I'm going to actually put the exposure down, maybe there. 
and I'm gonna do it from the bottom. I want the road in the bottom to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna leave my shift key press so I can get a straight radiated filter just about there. And to show you what it's doing, I can really darken it up there. I can really go up on the highlights. But I really want that road to be a little bit darker. Um, maybe about there, actually. Hit enter twice. I think I'm pretty happy with this picture. The before and after. Before and after. Thank you very much for watching this video tutorial. Let me know in the comments below what your workflow is compared to my workflow. Any other videos you would like to see, any other tutorials you would like to see. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. Peace.